I'm very grateful to be here today. I think the organizers of this have done a fantastic job. And I wish that we had something like this in the UK, but we don't. So congratulations to everybody who's organized this. I'm Bruce Lawson. <clears throat> I work for Opera, the web browser, the only European web browser. And that's enough about me. So, about you, um, would you show me your hand if you are a web developer? <clears throat> Excellent. Could you put your hand up if you've ever used the web? <laughs> okay. Can you put your hand up if you love using the web? You are so, so wrong. The web is a dangerous thing. I've spent 10 years telling people how to make websites that work on every browser, every operating system, every device that people with disabilities can use. People can use whatever their language, whatever their country. And I realize that I'm wrong. Here's another Englishman. This is Sir Tim Berners-Lee, an English guy who invented the web. And he said that universality of access, irrespective of hardware or software platform, network infrastructure, language, culture, location, or physical or mental impairment are core values. Who believes this? This, ladies and gentlemen of Krakow, is hippie bullshit. <laughs> and I'll tell you why it's hippie bullshit. As you probably know, <clears throat> the good people and the good government of the United States of America are uh, preparing, as we speak, to bomb Iran. Okay? <clears throat> and because my government in the UK does everything the American government tells it, I expect that quite soon, we too will help them bomb Iran. This is a real mug. You can buy this from an American right-wing organization if you want to. And so, in preparation for bombing Iran, my children asked me, well, why should we bomb Iran? And I said, because they're all evil. Of course they're all evil. Everybody in Iran is, of course, evil. And to prove it, I went onto Google and I looked at Iran blogs. And rather disappointingly, I found these. The one headed with pink is a blog by an Iranian woman about how she felt when she found out that her father had been diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. And the second blog in blue is by an Iranian woman telling us how grumpy she feels because in the summer, when it's 40 Celsius, the guys can wear jeans and t-shirts, but she has to wear the full black Islamic clothes. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is bad because this makes me realize that the people in Iran are just like us, who care about their families, who have normal day-to-day -day concerns, and now, I find it very difficult to hate the people that my government want me to hate. And this is why the web is bad. It's bad because of things like this, because people who live in countries with horrible totalitarian regimes, they can go on the web, the bad web, and tell us about what's happening. And we can learn from them. And by learning from them, we don't hate them anymore. This, of course, is a problem. This is the server traffic to uh, Opera Mini, which is a browser that we have. And this is the server traffic uh, when the Egyptian revolution was taking place. And those nice guys who used to run Egypt, they realized that the web was so dangerous that they actually cut off access because the web is so bad. 
So I think you'll agree with me that the web must be destroyed. Are you with me? Cool. <clears throat> so we all agree that the web needs destroying. What you're asking yourself is how. So I'm going to give you some of my top tips that I've seen 10 years looking at the web and evangelizing standards. These are my top tips about how you, as web developers, can help me destroy the web. Number one, only allow people with the right browsers to come to your website. <laughs> Have you ever seen this? This is best viewed in Safari. Download it before you can see my website. <clears throat> or this other one, which is fantastic. It tells me to come back with Firefox 2. <laughs> as well as destroying the web, you can quite successfully destroy your business like this, because nothing says to a customer, this website isn't maintained, than this Japanese one, which tells me that I need to use Internet Explorer 5.5. <laughs> <laughs> Internet Explorer 5.5 was released in July 2000, nearly 12 years ago. Would you buy anything from this website? I wouldn't. So this is a great way not only to destroy the web, but also destroy your business. So if you hate your boss, this is a real double whammy for you. <laughs> now, the way to do this is browser sniffing. This is an excellent image for browser sniffing. Sometimes, maybe you don't even know that you're browser sniffing because you are using some library. Or if you're using WordPress, maybe you've got some kind of plugin. <clears throat> so browser sniffing is looking at the user agent string of a browser. Every time you go to a website, your browser sends a string called the user agent string. These are them. I'm going to give you a short history of browser sniffing, if I can find my pointer. So the first browser was called uh, Mosaic. And you can see at the top, that was its user agent string. <coughs> Excuse me. And then Netscape came along. And Netscape invented another triumphant way to destroy the web. Netscape invented frames. So. If your website used frames, you'd look to see this user agent string, Mozilla 1.0. And you would serve frames to that website, uh, to that browser, and you'd tell other people to go away. Excellent. And then Internet Explorer came along, and that supported frames. But people were looking for this user agent string. So Internet Explorer also says, it's Mozilla. So people looking for the word Mozilla in the user agent string, they sent frames to Internet Explorer. Then Firefox came along, and that also says it's Mozilla. But it, just, it says it's Gecko, because that's the rendering engine. So Conqueror was a lovely open source project, and they wanted frames too. So they said, yeah, yeah, we're Mozilla. And they got the frames. So Opera, and that's who I work for, we wanted the frames too, because frames are great and fantastic for destroying the web, by the way. So Opera allows you to say that you're Mozilla, and you are compatible with MSIE. And it also allows you to say that you're Mozilla, and you're Gecko, and you're Firefox. <laughs> Safari turned up. Now, Safari was Apple took KHTML, which powered Conqueror, and they called it WebKit, and they wanted the frames. So Safari says it's Mozilla, it's WebKit, and it's KHTML, and it's like Gecko. And then Google Chrome turned up, and they wanted the frames too. So Google Chrome says it's Mozilla, and it's WebKit, and it's KHTML, which is Conqueror, and it's like Gecko, and it's Chrome, and it's Safari. <laughs> so every browser says it's Mozilla. So you can see that this is a perfect, foolproof, robust way 
of seeing what browser your visitors come with and then telling them to fuck off if they don't use the right one. It's not just stupid people who do this. On GitHub, they basically say, if you're not Internet Explorer, you're Netscape. And this is GitHub. This is what all the cool kids use. If you don't want to do user agent sniffing, I recommend only letting people with the right devices in. For example, Sorry, chalk only works on the iPad. The iPad is, of course, the latest, greatest, black, sexy, portable computer. Visiting a URL that says I have to have an iPad is like asking me to install a $500 plugin. <laughs> Said Mark Pilgrim of Google. <clears throat> This, when I was a kid, this was the latest, greatest, black, portable computing device. Anybody know what it is? ZX81. <clears throat> it had 4K of RAM. 4K. Its predecessor had 1K, and I used to write games in it. <clears throat> My point is, today's latest, greatest, sexy device is tomorrow's museum piece. If you waste your time coding for today's latest, greatest device, you are coding for a museum. And that's a brilliant way to destroy the web. Write it down. Taking your web app mobile just for iOS in 2011 is just like taking your desktop website only for IE4. This is the same thing. Ten years later, those of us who destroy the web have learned this lesson well. I hope you too will learn this lesson well. <clears throat> now, there's 1.2 billion people online. 1.6, sorry. But 4 billion, two of every three people on the planet have access to a mobile phone. If you are not careful, that means that four billion people have access to your website. But there's a great way to prevent people accessing your website through web destruction. <clears throat> China. These are statistics from the government of China. I can't give you a link because it's in Chinese. I don't recommend that you trust everything the Chinese government say but I see no reason to doubt this. The important thing is that access by mobile increased from 40 to 46%, but at the same time, access on desktops and laptops decreased. So this means that people in China, which is 20% of the world's population, are getting rid of these things and using mobile. Danger, they might try to look at your website. That would never do. So, in India, there are more mobile phones than there are toilets. India is another 20% of the globe. <clears throat> so this is 40% of the world trying to access the web on devices, and they're not using the iPad. They're not using the ZX81, but they're probably using a Nokia feature phone. But this can still access the web. Can you imagine what would happen if 40% of the world visited your website and tried to buy your products? Your business might be successful. This would never do. So stop these guys accessing your website. Now, the W3C, and I was part of this working group, they said, one web means making your content available. But it does not mean that the same information is available in exactly the same way across all devices. Hippie bullshit. Hippie bullshit. 
if they don't have a device that can show your website to pixel perfect perfection, don't let them in. Another great way to destroy the web is to require script or to require plugins. Now, here's a woman whose opinion I trust, Pixie Sticks. She was asked, why I insist upon coding JavaScript from scratch? JQ Touch, 100K. JQ Mobile, 160K. Censure, 400K. MyScript, 1K. Do not write your own JavaScript. Use the biggest library you can to slow down these people's devices so they can't access your website. Because if you don't do this, Chris Mills will use the bandwidth to download porn. Or people will look at YouTube videos of kittens, and that would never do. So a great way to destroy the web is to unnecessarily use bandwidth, a brilliant way. Anybody here speak or read Korean? No? What a surprise. Um, <laughs> this is Korean, and it says, strictly no entry. Korea has the best fiber optic network in the world. <clears throat> Their government is on a program to install free 10 gigabit broadband into every home in Korea. <clears throat> However, in Korea, 99.9% .9 of all computers run Microsoft Windows. Because the Korean government passed a law that any kind of secure transaction, banking, e-democracy, any kind of moving money around, any kind of online transaction, anything, must use the ActiveX plugin. <clears throat> and the ActiveX plugin is only really available on Internet Explorer. And Internet Explorer is only really available on Microsoft Windows. So this fantastically connected country, if you have an Android phone or an iPhone or a Linux box or a Mac, you cannot do online banking. You cannot do any kind of e-democracy. You cannot do online transactions. This is a brilliant way to destroy the web. Now, you probably can't pass laws requiring everybody in Poland to have Microsoft Windows. Is there any MPs here? No, okay, but what you can do is require plugins for your website. So you can do what the BBC does and tell me I must have Flash. Now, unfortunately, open standards people and those bad guys who make HTML5, they have done quite a good job of persuading people to use open video. So Flash is less and less used. But don't despair, because our friends at Google have just invented a new plugin called Native Client. So my advice to you, if you want to destroy the web, is require native client on your websites. Maybe require native client and Flash and real player as well, just to, <laughs> just to be on the safe side. Now, it's, un, it's obviously unfashionable to build a monoculture around Internet Explorer. A monoculture is a culture that has only one option, like in Korea. So, Another great way to destroy the web, and this is happening now, is replacing an Internet Explorer monoculture with a WebKit monoculture. Assume that anybody on mobile is using WebKit. It's not true at all. Most of them are using Opera, but nevertheless, assume that most people are using WebKit. Throw them out. Browser sniff. Tell them they can't come in if they're not using WebKit. Internet Explorer 6 is only just dying now. And the reason it lasted 10 years 
is because we let it. We, not you guys maybe, but we as a development community, we coded to Internet Explorer's bugs. We browser sniffed for Internet Explorer. We made sites that would only work on Internet Explorer. And that's why, 10 years later, we still have to worry about IE6. So now, just as IE6 is dying, we're rebuilding a monoculture, this time for web kids. This is excellent for web destruction. The way to do this is use WebKit vendor prefixes in your CSS. Even though Mozilla and Internet Explorer and Opera can support CSS transforms, don't give them the chance. If you just use WebKit, you are helping to build this WebKit monoculture, which destroys the idea of the open web. This is a great thing to do. Angry Birds. Tim Berners-Lee thought that the web was all about people communicating with each other, people working together, all this kind of hippie bullshit. We know the entire evolution of the web has been leading up to one thing, angry birds. Now, Angry Birds, it says, only works on Google Chrome. There's a big download Google Chrome button. The way the developer enforces this, you probably can't see this, the way the developer enforces this is through some really terrible browser sniffing. First of all, it checks if you're on mobile. And it does this by checking if the device has touch. Because no tablets have touch, do they? No laptops have touch, do they? No, no. So he's assuming, or she's assuming, a one-to-one -one correlation between mobile and touch. And then, to make sure you're using WebKit, he checks whether it supports WebKit box shadow. It says you must use Chrome, but Safari and the BlackBerry browser, etc., they all support this too. And in fact, this is so much of a problem that Microsoft and Opera and Firefox have said that they too will support WebKit box shadow. So this new way of browser sniffing through CSS vendor prefixes initially was a promising way to destroy the web, but I don't think it's going to, unfortunately. OK, next tip, make your websites country specific. Now I'm going to show you some statistics. <clears throat> These are gathered from our Opera Mini servers. Opera Mini, if you don't know, is a proxy browser for feature phones and smartphones. We know what different countries are looking at because when you call up a URL, it goes to our servers in Norway or the US or China, and then the website is rendered on the server and sent to your phone. I want you to understand that this can never be used to identify what you as individuals do. The statistics I'm going to show are on a country-wide uh, perspective. I don't want you guys to run away and think that Opera's tracking your every move. So in the US, here are the top 10 websites and the top 10 handsets from September 2011. That's the, last, uh, that's the last date I've got stats for. So in the US, you can see that it's some high-end handsets. And you've got Google, Facebook, YouTube, Wikipedia, Yahoo, MyOpera, Twitter. What you've got is search and webmail, etc., on Google. A portal with Yahoo. Social networking. Videos of cats. And Wikipedia uncensored, community-driven information. Let's look at a country completely different from the US. In Bangladesh, in September 2011, we see a totally different range of handsets, all of which are Nokia, and most of which are lower-end phones. But you can see, they look at 
the same kind of things. Facebook, Google, Kittens, Wikipedia, <laughs> Yahoo. GetJar is a place where you download Java games because people tend to pay for bandwidth by the megabyte, so they download a game and play a game rather than surf the web. And FileTube is some um, file sharing, piracy. But you can see social networking, uncensored community information, search and webmail, etc. In the UK, where I'm from, the top 10 sites and handsets from September 2011, search and webmail, kittens, uncensored information with Wikipedia, social networking, a portal. And you can see that the handsets are not as high-end as the US, but more high-end than Bangladesh. You guys in Poland, thank you very much. We've seen 133% growth in a year. What you can see here is that 60% growth in users, but each of those users is consuming more information. You guys surf more. And you can see, you guys love search and webmail, portal, auctions. You've got uh, portals and webmails in the Polish language. Uh, you have file sharing. And you have this last one. Are there any? Uh... <laughs> I've got to say, I used to be a teacher. If there's, any school, <laughs> if there's any school kids in the room, do your own fucking homework, OK? <laughs> Seriously, you're not going to learn if you just copy from somebody else. So you can see that across the world, US, UK, Bangladesh, Poland, the figures for Burma, the figures for Ghana, the figures for Kenya, all show the world Whatever their device wants to consume the same kind of information. Your job as web destroyers is to stop this. So sniff the IP address and say, sorry, you can't look at this in your country. Fantastic way to destroy the web there, ladies and gentlemen. Another great way to really wreck the web is use royalty encumbered data formats. Again, We've been here before. Years and years ago, the GIF format it was patented. It was owned by Unisys, and they wanted a royalty from every web developer who used the GIF format. This is why the W3C invented the PNG format. And having been here before, we're here again. <coughs> Excuse me. HTML5 video. There is no one video format that works on every browser. The spec said, let's all use an open source, royalty-free format called Og Theora. And Apple and Nokia objected. And so that was taken out of the spec, and everybody is free to choose their own format. Opera, Chrome, and Firefox use something called WebM, which is open source. Safari and Microsoft Internet Explorer use something called H666. Sorry, H264. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what happened there. Um, <laughs> H264 is commonly known by its extension, MP4. And if you charge money for people to see your video content, you've got to give the, the owners of this H666 format, you've got to give them some money. By an incredible coincidence, you will find that two browsers only support H264, and Microsoft and Apple are part of the organization that collect royalties from people using H.264. An amazing coincidence, I'm sure you'll agree. Charging people to use a particular format to put content on the web is a brilliant way to destroy the web.
thank you, Microsoft and Apple. OK, another way is, sorry, I'm not bored. I just have no idea what the time is. Um, another way to destroy the web is to break the URL addressing system. As you know, if you're a web developer, everything has a URL. An image has a URL. A video has a URL. A page has a URL. You can even have URLs to specific places in the page. This is why web apps are better than desktop apps or native apps. You can link from a web page into a web app because it has a URL. You cannot link into a desktop app. You cannot easily link into a PDF, and you cannot easily link into a native app. So if you want to work with me to destroy the web, destroy the URL addressing system. You can do this using uh, a pattern called the hash ban. Now, this is used a lot in Twitter. So when Twitter started, the URL for me was twitter.com slash Bruce L. Now, it's twitter.com slash hash bang slash Bruce L. And that requires JavaScript to resolve it. So on uh, Lifehacker, they used this system. Their JavaScript was broken, and so every URL on the page looked like that. Brilliant way to destroy the web. If you can't do this, I advise copying what the New York Stock Exchange do. The New York Stock Exchange will not allow you to link to them. This is in their terms and conditions. Prohibits unauthorized hypertext link by others. Now, don't tell them, OK? But here, shit, is a hypertext link. <laughs> Please don't tell them, because it's the New York Stock Exchange. This is Wall Street. These guys have millions. And that will be me when they set their sharks with lasers onto me. But I'm prepared to do that if it will help destroy the web. The New York Stock Exchange is not satisfied with only doing this. These guys are evil geniuses. So, the New York Stock Exchange will not allow you to use web browsers, engines, software, spiders, robots, avatars, agents, tools, or other devices to look at their website. <laughs> Think about it. Brilliant. I'm not quite sure how they will enforce this, and I'm not sure whether there's enough water for the sharks with lasers to swim after you in Krakow. <laughs> Don't move to Venice. The New York Stock Exchange will not permit any third party to obstruct, receive, modify, or otherwise interfere with the display or delivery of adverts. So if you have ad-blocking software in your browser, don't go to the New York Stock Exchange. And if you have a boyfriend, or a girlfriend, or a husband, or a wife, or a roommate, do not let them near your computer, because you can't even let third parties <laughs> install. <laughs> but they're not satisfied with that, because these guys are totally evil geniuses. They've got sharks with lasers. This. You can print one copy of the website. And you can... <laughs> You can have one temporary copy in a computer's memory. So don't go with two different browsers, because that's two different caches. <laughs> Do not even think about looking at it on your PC and your phone, because you're only allowed one copy. Or if you do look at it, clear the cache before the sharks come. <laughs> now, you'll notice that this is the Terms and Conditions page, and you'll notice how small the print is, and you'll notice where the scroll bar is. <laughs> but in order to look at the New York Stock Exchange website, you agree to review this agreement every time you visit. <laughs> I want you all to promise you'll do this, OK? Because otherwise, it's the sharks with lasers, guys. 
Another great way of destroying the web is to require certain types of hardware. I don't mean specific devices, certain types of hardware. So I, I've got a friend who, um, who's blind, and blind people can't use a computer mouse because they can't see to know where the pointer is. So most websites and most browsers allow you to browse using the keyboard only. And if you're a power user of websites, you probably do this a lot, you know, tabbing between form fields, etc. So a great way to destroy the web is assume and require the user to have a mouse. This is a simple bit of CSS, and what this does is when you hover over something, something else pops out, maybe a second level navigation. So if you're using a mouse, you can hover. If you're not using a mouse, you can't hover. So you don't see the navigation, so you can't get to where you're going. Fantastic way to destroy the web. And it's not just about disabled people. Who's got a mouse on their iPad? <laughs> so how are you going to hover? But nevertheless, this is great. Do this. If you're nice and don't want to destroy the web, you could say focus, comma, colon, active. Probably. Or well, maybe I've got that wrong. Oh, yeah, another great way is when a link is focused, turn off the outline so the user who's tabbing through the site has absolutely no idea where he or she is. It's not really destroying the web. It's just pissing somebody off a little bit. But <laughs> it's a start. Assume they have a visual display. <clears throat> this, here's a clue. This bit of text is blue and underlined. And when you click on it, it goes somewhere. Would any web developer in the audience like, a, like to hazard a guess as to what HTML element you use to make something be blue and underlined, clickable, and go somewhere. Anybody? A paragraph. Oh, Olga. Now, before, before I was trying to destroy the web, I would have said I'd use an A tag, a link. But no. What Google Mail does is use this, a span, and then hang a bit of JavaScript on it. This is great. Because a user who can't see has no idea what's going on at all here. Or, look at this. This is a, a button that you click on, and it does something. Would anybody like to guess what people who are not as clever at destroying the web might do? Button. Yes. That's exactly what non-web destroyers would do. But those of us who know, do this. <laughs> I love this. This is, this is destructive in so many ways. It's several billion nested divs. God knows what that is. These have got quote marks, and other ones haven't. Who knows what this means? Who knows what this means? Oh, the non-breaking space. Oh, and there's the button text. I'm sure Google won't mind if you, if you copy this and use it in your own projects. There are two types of developers. Those who give a shit, those who care about the semantics of divs, those people who actually code properly, and those who create epic shit. Yes, B before I understood that the web needs destroying, I would say the best developers use the tools the right way, and create epic shit. But no. If you want to do good stuff, ignore best practice. Ignore semantics. And that way, you can destroy the web. If you're really, really into web destruction, you can do this. And your web page, if you view source, is just an empty body tag. And then you inject loads of stuff with JavaScript. Now, this is great, because there's absolutely no semantics at all, which is good. This is great, because it needs loads and loads, hundreds of k of script. And that, of course, wastes bandwidth. 
so Chris Mills can't serve porn, which is always good. So I advise, if you're a really super ninja web destroyer, do this. Empty body tag, and that's your page. Now, here's a great way to destroy the web. Censorship. You probably can't do this. You probably need to lobby your government. Now, of course, some countries like China and Burma and other places, they censor the web for political reasons. In the UK, we can't do this because we're a democracy. <laughs> so our current government is trying to censor the web through the age-old age old, think of the children. If children have access to the web, the next thing you know, <laughs> this is not my daughter, by the way. <laughs> There's one trouble with censoring the web. Yahoo found this <clears throat> a few years ago. Citizens in the towns of Clitheroe, Lightwater, and Peniston if they tried to search on Yahoo for a local business, perhaps they typed in, uh, I want a mechanic in Peniston, Yahoo would not give them any search results because Yahoo noticed that in the names of these towns were these words. <laughs> I wish I was kidding, but I'm not. <laughs> because... The town of Clitheroe, <laughs> Lightwater, and Peniston happened to contain these strings. You could not do a search on Yahoo for them. Mrs. Callahan couldn't even sign up for a Yahoo webmail address because her surname, Callahan, contains a string A L L A H, which obviously means that she's an Islamic terrorist. This is well known amongst uh, people whose job it is to do content filtering. Uh, and it's named after another English town. And this is called the Scunthorpe problem. I don't know why. Now, OK, I, I've talked about destroying the web. I, I'm not really talking about complete destruction. I'm talking about what the Americans in Vietnam used to say. We need to destroy the village to save the village. If we don't destroy the web, people who don't have the latest quad-core laptop might use the web. People who can't afford iPhones, iPads, Android phones might use the web. People with disabilities might use the web. People in China and India and sub-Saharan Africa might use the web. Can you imagine if Chinese people could use the web, they could emerge as the new superpower? <laughs> oh. So, can anybody tell me what this stands for? No, World Wide Web. Have you not been listening? This stands for Wealthy Western Web. This is what the web is for. So I urge you to do everything I've said. Censor, browser sniff, require devices, download shitloads of script, use plugins, abuse the standards. I urge you, ladies and gentlemen of Krakow, destroy the web. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think we'll all start destroying the web right tomorrow in the morning. No, tonight. Or tonight, right? There's no time to lose. 
Uh, do you have any questions about destroying the web? Or about mankinis? It's up to you. <laughs> it, is it possible to be employed then? Is it, is it possible to be employed then? Yes. I'm just a web developer and designer. So what I should do then? Just if, work with me and No, no, no I go to do, to do wood and take a rest. Good man. <laughs> Good man. Any more questions? Well then, I thank you very much for listening. If you do have a question about destroying the web or anything else, or about Opera, you can contact me on those details. I'm always glad to hear from you, and I want to say thank you very much for coming, and thank you to the organizers for inviting me. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat>